All right, what's up everyone? We're here at Power Build Gym, KOP, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. This is their newest location. Let's show you guys around and do what we can because I'm a little injured, I'm not gonna lie. My wrist is kind of fucked up and uh, my lumbar is not doing too well, but we've kind of just been pushing through, doing what we can, and that's what we're gonna do today. Welcome to the gym. This is our beautiful front desk man here, Colin. He's a great guy, but he always beats me in ping pong, so we can't give him too much credit because it just hurts my ego. Welcome. This is Colin's office. This is where we film the podcast. And um, it's time to take some pre-workout. Let's see here. Actually, I'm going to dome this. All right, so we already have a scoop of mode in here. I swear I was sipping one scoop on the way. But obviously one scoop's not enough. We take two every time we train. So we're going to dome another scoop while we chug the rest. After that, we have the last of my Gorilla Shroom. We have one Gorilla Mind Smooth, which is the nootropic formula. And we have four Gorilla Sigma, which is a testosterone booster. Taking all of this pre-workout. Let's get that down right now. Beautiful. And we just upgraded. We have our tincture stack. And guys, this, if you want to add something to your pre-workout to make you feel it, tinctures like this, adaptogenic, herbal tinctures, alcohol extract, double extract. We have this energy tonic here. This is potent. This one is a secret. We're not going to talk too much about that one. And this is cordyceps mushroom. So we're going to dose all three of these on top. And I'm telling you, the addition of these three can drastically change your workout. It's potent. It's also like alcohol, so it really burns. But it's worth it. Let's drop this fuck. And the goal is with these, especially the alcohol ones, don't swallow it right away. Spread the surface area all throughout your mouth and almost like, like pull it, suck it into your gums. It's called sublingual administration when you put something under your tongue and it absorbs way quicker. If you do that, leave it in, pull it into your gums, you'll feel the shit like pulling into your fucking bloodstream quickly. It's, it's crazy. We have the Gorilla Mode Crush here. This is the limited edition. I'm not even gonna try to shill you on this because this flavor is probably gonna be out of stock forever by the time you see this video. It's the limited edition one, so every year there's like a limited edition flavor. It's like one drop and then it's gone. Easy work. That's the pre-workout stack today. I always feel really fucking good when I have these tinctures, so should be a decent workout and uh, we're gonna start warming up now. Um, wait, have you been filming like that the whole time? Oh, or shit, no. landscape, yeah, I was yeah, like, no, I was just doing you got the first clip like that, right? Yeah. Where it's going. All right, so pretty much every day, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, upper body, squat, bench, or deadlift, I roll out just a little bit. And the whole goal is the intention behind rolling out. You can roll up and down and, and get next near nothing done here. But if you're rolling, right, listen closely to my spine here as I adjust myself. Roll on your neck, your upper back. It's all about exhaling and relaxing. And then listen to this. Uh, quite a little adjustment there. And then you breathe into that, all that new open space. Relax and let your spine just extend. Opens up your rib cage, you can get a nice wider pump. Activate your spinal extension. You get a much better arch when you're benching. Train your chest a lot better. Squat, bench, or deadlift, it, it helps. And the whole goal is just finding tension spots. Taking big breaths in. And then exhaling. So to anyone that says foam rolling doesn't do anything, I heavily disagree because if I trained the way I did and didn't foam roll before, I'd be in a wheelchair by now. A few minutes just like that and I'm ready to go. All right, so we're here. We have a, we are blessed with a moment to talk with the owner of Powerbill Gym, C.T. Whitney. This is Colin. This is his second location, correct? So yes, sir. tell us a little bit about what it's like being a gym owner. You open your first location. How long after did you open this one? Second. So from the first to the second, it was it was about two full years. Now, when you opened the first one, did you think like, oh, I'm I'm trying to get a second location open ASAP, or like, no. how'd that come about? Yeah, no, I definitely didn't think about that at all. Really, it was the, even the first gym kind of came about as almost to like supplement what I was already doing. So I was already personal training, I was doing a lot of online training. We already had the Power Build brand established with you know, the online membership site, you know, everything. We were already kind of doing all of the things. So the gym was going to give us our own space to continue to kind of grow and expand in, in the brand. So that's why this, the first location is smaller and it's all I could do at the time. So 
got to kind of start where you can. So you clearly had a lot going on in the background. It's not like, oh, I want to open a gym and you just opened it. Because I yeah. think a lot of people have that like thought, like, oh, I'd love to own a gym one day, but they don't really realize just how many steps it takes to get into it. And like you are already establishing a brand, like you said. So is there any tips you would give to someone who's like looking to start a gym or like what are the biggest things they need to be aware of that they might not be aware of off the start? I feel like anyone who trains wants to open a gym. It seems like I literally have this conversation three times a day. There's a lot you won't know. Even if you do your own research, you're going to come in, you're going to get blindsided by a bunch of different things. So do yourself a favor and start building your own personal brand first. Whether you train, compete, train others, all of the, all of the above would be ideal, to be honest, because you can kind of already put yourself into more of an authority figure position in, in the category of fitness. For me, it was more of a powerlifting, not powerlifting specific. The Powerbill brand has always been powerlifting bodybuilding. But in this area, I was pretty well known. I was always down here coaching, competing. So it gave me that little uh, cheat code in a sense to get the gym up and running That's quicker. It's huge. Bad. If you just kind of open something up you know, out of thin air, pending, you know, you have like the financials for it, it's still gonna be a slow build. You know what I mean? If people don't know about you, they don't know about the product or service that you can provide. So start by building your own personal brand whatever that may mean for you. Training was going well, like personal training, online training, that the gym was literally to supplement that. So I had a little bit of that safety net and shit still got weird, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was crazy and like there was plenty of scary moments, a lot of sleepless nights, sitting in the shower, fucking thinking to myself, how the fuck am I gonna make it through I this? It, so there's gonna be hard times regardless. So you wanna set yourself up ahead to make sure you can kind of make it through those hurdles, yeah. you know? Well, let me just say, you've done a beautiful job at building a gym that is tailored to powerlifters and bodybuilders, or power builders, AKA Perry Power Building. This is the place for me, I love it, so yeah. good work. The last two questions would be, what's your favorite part about owning a gym? Like, what just like fulfills you the most? And then, what are like some of the biggest cons or just headaches that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I see you're in yeah. here all the time. I mean, he's in here pretty much all day, almost every day. He trains till fucking 1 a.m. sometimes. I know there's not much free time he has these days, so it'd be interesting to hear about that. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is, obviously it's a passion, it's what I've been doing forever, it's what I love to do, so although it's a lot of work, it doesn't feel like work a lot of the time. Like, I'll be kind of just going through these 16 hour days, 17, 18, whatever it may be. And I get to the end of the day, I, it's not like a drag. It kicks your ass, but it's not like a drag, like a nine to five may be. Right. So the pros are the flexibility that I get to kind of create my own schedule, but then also create an environment where people like you could come in, thrive, accomplish goals, reach new ones, set new ones. You know what I mean? Like this is like an environment that you can like truly level up in sport or content or business. Like you're going to meet a lot of other people who are similar minded here, entrepreneurial. So it's just like creating that environment that that uplifting environment and then uh you know some of the downsides with that is like these long ass nights like i'll be in here <laughs> till 2, 3 a.m. I'll come out. I'll be scaring the, the late night crew. They're like, we didn't know you were fucking here. And I've been here since 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So long days, long nights. There's a lot of hurdles in the road. Like I'm starting to figure some shit out now because I've made it through those rough waters early on, but we're sti there's still like things that pop up. Just when you think you're finally like maybe getting ahead or so you figured it out, you get fucking rocked again by something that you've never even thought of. So that's probably any business. Any business, there's gonna be hurdles. You just have to build a roll with the punch and learn how to keep pushing forwards. The nine to five, like the eight hour day is no longer a thing. Double that because it's like eight hour days, that's lunch. That's lunch time. And then you do your next eight hour. Gyms, you know, gyms are tough. A lot of things break. A lot of, everything is expensive in a gym. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. You know what I mean? It's it, how much do you really want it? If you just come to the gym and you're like, man, it would be cool to open a gym. It's not for you. Like you better fucking love it. It better be everything to you, so. Yeah, it sounds like it's gotta be like a burning passion inside you. You're willing to work 18 hour days which can be so fulfilling when you have that passion to actually build that community for others that's the pro but the con is yeah it's not just a simple task this is gonna this is gonna take most of your life force energy you have to be all about it so that's some good info i think they're gonna appreciate that and i appreciate you taking some time to talk absolutely about brother it. always right. a pleasure we're gonna start training now yeah dude i know you listed with david lee like, right yeah dude it's just like so inspiring but you guys I lift, started lifting because you guys. Really? I, I love 18. it. Yeah, dude, it's my fucking dream, bro. I would love to start doing that. But uh, I just started working. Uh, I'm going to save it for trying to get a camera and start making a little video soon. I love it, bro. Uh, it's so fulfilling to hear. Like, I can just see the energy. Like, you just love it. I My goal is to, like, inspire people the same way I was inspired. Yeah. Dave really inspired me. So it's mm -hmm. cool to, like, just give that to others. And I appreciate you acknowledging it. No problem, dude. Of yeah, bro. Course, bro. What's your name? Julian Beach. Julian Beach. Nice yeah, to bro. meet you, brother. Yeah, bro. Of course, bro. Oh, yeah.
All right, so as you can see, it's easy to get swept up in conversations with ping pong, conversations, sauna, it all adds up. So we're finally gonna start warming up here. This is probably my favorite warm up I do this. Doesn't matter what I'm doing, squat, bench, deadlift, just getting some blood in my external rotators, opening up my scapula a bit. Now, a lot of people like to do these external rotations standing straight up, but think about it. Gravity is pulling this weight down. The, the plane of motion that you're moving in is not really resisting gravity, but if you bend over like this, now it makes the movement much harder and it activates all those external Internal rotators much better. It's a great warm up for bench, get blood in your upper back, get nice and explosive. It's a great warm up for squats because you get some blood in your upper back, you get a nice cushion for the bar. Even deadlifts, it can help a little bit open up, get your chest up, better positioning as you start to pull. So we're gonna go over to the barbell bench. We're gonna see how much weight I can get up to with this uh, fucked up wrist. All right, so after our external rotators are nice and warmed up, I usually move over to a little bit of lat pull down, really light. Just get a big stretch, squeeze, get some blood in my entire back. Helps stability on bench and strength and CNS activation, pulling tension, et cetera, et cetera. So the goal here is just max tightness. I'm literally pulling the bar like apart to get, engage my lats as much as possible as I pull down. Really not about just moving the weight. It's about squeezing the, the entire back. I'm pulling with my elbow completely and just trying to pinch my shoulder blades together and pinch my elbows together at the bottom. It's a little bit of weight, but it's like a tight, painful contraction. And yeah, that's the goal is just get some blood in there, warm up so you're strong for bench. You don't want to be going max weight. You know, you don't want to go super high intensity where you can only do a few reps. You want to be doing like 12 plus reps just to get some nice blood in there. And now it's time to bench, hopefully. Whoa. All right, boys, we're here at the bench press. Now, sadly, I damaged my wrist very badly. The joint's clearly out of place. It's healing out of place. I can't press that heavy, but we're going to throw a wrist wrap on, just a little Band-Aid, and kind of fuck ourselves up a little more for the video. It was clearly broken. It was very bruised, swollen, inflamed. And here was my protocol. I mega dosed fish oil immediately. I mega dosed turmeric, aka curcumin, immediately. I took a very hot Epsom salt bath with a lot of Epsom salt to pull a lot of the water and inflammation and swelling out. The first day after I did it, I couldn't even hold my phone. I couldn't pick it up like this. That's how fucked my wrist was. So the second day after doing that fish oil, turmeric, hot Epsom salt bath, the swelling was way down. The bruising was already getting better. And then I went into a sauna, more heat, sweat out more of the swelling. I um, had like a micronutrient dense smoothie, a bunch of collagen, all that stuff to heal it up. Basically all that healed very nicely, but the joint is clearly still out of place. We're gonna do what we can here. Even like 135 bench without a wrap kind of hurts. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see. Feels okay. All right, we're gonna go to two and see how that feels. Okay. Okay, a little bit of pain, but it works. So heaviest I've gone up to since this injury, it's been like five weeks. I've only gone up to 245, so we're gonna try to hit a little post-injury PR for you guys today. 245 up next. All right, let's see. Hey. I think we're gonna try to throw a quarter on there, be a little ignorant. I'm thinking I need a lift off here just because if my wrist wants to snap, I want someone to grab the bar. Easy. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna call that our top set, but I'm happy with it, I'll take it. Not being greedy, that, even that was a little greedy, I'm not gonna lie, this, I think I'm gonna have to go get x-rays and literally have them set this shit, pull it. And what sucks is that like, I have really high bone mineral density. So if it was broken and it's healing out of place, it might be kind of fucking hard for them to break this shit back into place, we'll see. I was watching a video the other day of this bodybuilder and he's like, you can be the hardest training motherfucker, have all your diet down, but, if you're always injured, you're not gonna be able to be the best. If your wrist is hurt or your fucking back's fucked up, you can't deadlift, you can't do X, Y, Z exercise, it doesn't matter how hard you wanna train, you literally, you're not gonna be able to make it. So longevity and staying injury free is like just so important. 
All right, so now we're over at the dumbbells. I hit a few back down sets on bench, nothing much, but now we're gonna do dumbbells. This is one of my favorite supersets. I've built a lot of muscle doing this. It just feels good. You get the craziest pump. Is this incline dumbbell press superset it with lateral raises. So let's start off with some 50s, make sure we can handle these things. And honestly, I'm just doing what I can do these days, realistically, I'm maintaining because the pro to it that my wrist being fucked up is like, I gotta hit all these sets like super slow and like really focus on the contraction. So it's helping me in that way, but it's kind of holding me back too, let's be honest. Kind of just take this like three to six away from failure. bent over laterals. Ah. Hey. Ah. 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 Oh, started a little heavy on the laterals. So with lateral raises, what I found is you need to do both. You gotta go heavy with some momentum where you can actually hold at the top a little, but then you also wanna go really light where you do a crazy amount of reps. Pin your clavicle down so you're keeping your traps out of it and just contract your shoulder. You gotta do both. If you just do heavy laterals all the time with a bunch of momentum and not controlling the negative, you're really not gonna build a crazy amount of shape in my opinion, so do both. One other thing I wanted to mention about on my wrist recovery is that I wasn't just sitting at home being sedentary. You have to stay active when you're hurt. You wanna keep all those growth pathways activated, right? So I was in here day two. I could barely pick up a five pound dumbbell. It hurt bad to curl it but I was doing whatever I could. I had a strap to my wrist, doing cable tricep extensions without using my wrist. Basically anything I could do to just keep my blood flowing, actually get a workout. If your wrist injured, come in and train legs. It's gonna help you recover because you're spiking all those hormonal pathways. If you injure yourself and you sit at home because, oh, you gotta rest because you're hurt, you gotta recover, it's gonna take way longer to recover than if you're in here at least getting your blood flowing, doing some cardio, training other muscle groups that you can train that aren't injured. So. That's another key. You can take a bunch of fish oil, turmeric, oh, lower the inflammation, but if you're super sedentary, you're not gonna recover. So keep that in mind. What kind of wanna push it? Let's see if we can touch the 70s. Oh, oh. I think we're good here, come on. Hey. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. That feels pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I kinda wanna go heavier. I'm gonna drop it on the laterals this time. Cause like I said, it's good to go heavy. It's also good to go light and really get a nice contraction and control the negative. Pause at the top for a second. Control the negative on the way down. Hey, Burns a little bit. All right, next up we have skull crushers. Now, this is an exercise that I've returned to recently. I haven't done in years, but it's always good to just be thinking about the, the portions of the range of motion that you're training, right? If you're only training triceps in a press down motion, you're not training the entire strength curve, right? Every muscle group has a bell curve of extremes of different portions of resistance. And so it's very important if you wanna train your tricep or any muscle group in a holistic manner, you gotta be getting it in stretch portions of the range of motion, right? So when I'm doing skull crushers here, not only am I just doing a normal tricep extension like this, but also on some of the sets I'm coming down, and then I'm forcing extension overhead to stretch my tricep and even my lat a little bit, right? So there's multiple ways to do it. Right here, I'm maximizing the stretch by getting my elbows behind my head. For those that don't know, there's a tie-in uh, between your tricep and your lat. So if you're using your tricep, certain head of it, there's, you have to be using your lat to some degree. So what I'll do is I'll superset this with the stretch. Uh, well, actually what I'll do is I'll superset this like a normal skull crusher. And once I'm failing, then I'll use a little momentum and get that stretch in there to get some more reps. Uh, uh, pretty hard. So I'm gonna start like this, normal skull crusher overhead. Uh, uh. And then move into forcing a little more stretch, get some momentum. Uh. Uh. 
Uh, uh. Hey. And sometimes I'll just even try set it with this close grip. Uh, uh. Ooh, that hurts the tries, baby. Come on, boy. Um, tricep extensions next. All right, motherfucking tricep extensions. Basically, I mean, there's two extremes of the portions of the range of motion. So if you look here from the side view, you'll see I can do a tricep extension and I can stand like this all day long. I can stand here all day. There's not much resistance on my tricep. If I step back here, it's all about the angle in relation to your joint or your arm. So if this cable is parallel to my arm, I can sit here and hold it all day. If now I create, if I go towards more of a 90 degree angle with the cable and my arm, this gets pretty hard. It's hard to hold it like this all day long. So you have to think, what portions of the range of motion are you training? Is there any point where you can basically make certain portions of the range of motion harder for yourself? It's not about just doing as many reps as possible, as heavy as possible. What I like to do is start sets out here where I'm bent over because down here, when I'm fully contracted, there's actually more load uh, on my tricep than if I'm down here fully contracted. So I'll do a bunch of reps here. And as it gets harder, I'll actually step in closer to make it a little easier. And then I'll even get as close where I'm literally just pressing it straight down, almost involving my pecs a little bit. And that can be a great first set warm up. It can also be a great finisher. I'll usually do this as a warm up, and then I'll start to go heavier. Uh. The key I find with triceps is really bulge your lats. Flare your lats and bulge your tricep into your lat. And really just lock your elbow out as hard as you can. Uh. Uh, drop sets too, of course. Uh. Uh. And as you drop it lighter, try to squeeze and hold it longer. Uh. Hey. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this workout. As you can see, it's just like a general maintenance upper body workout. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see you next time. The last part I forgot to show you, the posing corner. This is a beautiful area and the lighting's insane you're about to see. As you can see, just this brutal, crazy down lighting right here. So you can get some fraudulent Instagram pictures and videos. You have to exhale all your air, flare your lats. I'm bulging my, tri my arm, my tricep into my lat, just like I was doing on the press downs. And I'm exhaling and shrinking my waist as tight as possible. I'm exhaling on my air, and I'm literally squeezing my waist down. Now that's gonna make my waist way tighter. Then I have a big, if I have a big breath of air and I'm trying to, br and it's trying to flex my abs, it's not gonna work. So what better way to finish a workout than some kombucha and some ping pong? We're about to destroy my boy Brandon here, so let's see what happens. Like, nah. I play better holding a bucha. Zeros first to 21, win by two, switch every five, sir. Zero one. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Let me slam it on you. 